So, hello India, hello Bangalore. It's wonderful to be here. It is the first time in my life to be in India. Can you imagine that? Woo! And I spent the last five days here and I feel almost like a home far away from home. And this has a lot to do with what I talk about. So what you can see here, this is my vision. And I figured out that there are some great people in Bangalore which fi fit perfectly into this vision. And you know, when you connect with like-minded people, then it's very easy to feel home, far away from home. And I tell you a little secret. This works everywhere on the planet. If you connect with the people that have the same mindset as you do. And this is basically the vision I have for my entire life. And I tell you, I'm so committed to that. We did a short video shoot um, four weeks ago with a paraglider. And unfortunately, I fell and I broke my arm. This is why at the moment I can't move so well with the arm, so not really good gestures. Um, and so I was in the, in the air with my arm broken. And I thought, okay, it will not be that bad. Um, let's go afterwards, after we are paragliding, um, to the award ceremony, ceremony that we had in this evening, and afterwards to the hospital. And then I got the cover and all that. So you see, 100% of my life, I commit to this vision. So hello, my name is Romy. I really would like you to remember my name because I love people, and I would love to connect with all of you. Because when you are at the TEDx, you are inspiring, you are open-minded, and you are great. Big applause for you. So, you know, names matter. When you get in contact with someone and want to build a relationship, it's a good idea to remember the person's name. And the other good thing is if you remember the person's story. So when, whatever he tells you or she tells you. And I tell you quickly my story. This little lady here, it used to be me in the age of three, and you can't see it, but I had a major problem. I had all the time play myself alone. My younger sister, she was a baby, as you can see down, and my bigger sister, she had to go to school, so I was alone at home. And I don't like being alone. So I thought, I mean, I don't remember what I thought, but <laughs> I came up with this idea in my mind. This is Irmi. And she used to be my imaginary friend. So we did all cool stuff together. Whenever I did something bad, I said to my mom, it's Irmi's fault, I'm sorry, it wasn't my idea. And it was fun with her. And I found out that I can create the world I want to live it myself. Irmi went away when I got to the kindergarten. I think that was a good, that, that was good for my brain that she went away. <laughs> Maybe she comes back later when I'm 80, I don't know. Um, 20 years later, I found myself in this situation. I mean, I got a great job at a great design agency. I had three great years. And after three years, I, I thought to myself, is this what I really want to do for the rest of my life? feeling in an office, like in the prison. And you know, when times are not that stressful and busy in work, then you have some time to think. Or when you go on a holiday, on a vacation, then you have a lot of time to think. And that's not too good, <laughs> because then you have all those crazy ideas. And this question, so why am I doing this, didn't went away. So, okay, I thought that's a problem because I want to surround myself with the people I find intellectually stimulating, and I had those in my former company. This was the reason why I stayed even longer. And at the same time, I didn't love it anymore. So I decided, I took the brave decision, although a lot of people told me I'm crazy, this is such a good job being a designer at a design agency. Um, hundreds of people would want to have those jobs, but for me, it was the time to go. And then I started from scratch, like 20 years ago, when I had to create my own world. I came up with my vision, so what would I want to do from this time on? And 
I introduced it already in the beginning. I want to connect and work with the most passionate and innovative people, but in a cool way, like not like in prison. And then I did another imaginary in my head. So what should it look like? And I thought this would be a cool office. So not having this for vacation, but having this as a, no as a normal work day. And I tell you something, that's how my work looks like, not every day, but on some days. And every day is like the sparkling eyes that you can see on those, in these eyes. And how I do it, I follow my philosophy, it's do what you love. And when I measure my work, it is um, the sparkling eyes. I want to be surrounded by sparkling eyes, and whenever I see myself into the mirror, and I don't see my eyes sparkle, then I have to change something. Fortunately, it didn't happen in the last four years too often. This sounds like a nice theory. How did I make this happen? So first of all, the most inspiring and passionate people, I had to find them. And I introduced co-working Salzburg as one of the first co-working spaces in Europe, because this was for me the perfect method to attract those people that I want to have in my life. And we are not just a usual co-working space like office and desks. We have this culture of do what you love. So we try to support each other that this is possible for everyone. And that's how it looks like. Of course, we do all this stuff that all the co-working spaces do, like startup weekends, it's great fun, and you attract those people that you want to have in there. But we do a couple of other things. We think about what are the problems that we are facing at the moment. And uh, in Europe, we have some refugee crisis. And we think that should not be a problem. Let's integrate those people, because they have talent too. They are inspiring too. And that's how, why we came up with this idea of fair matching, matching refugees, um, people who want to have a job with companies out in our community. Then other stuff that we do, we, are, we introduced co and Baby because we realized that there are a lot of parents who are self-employed, who are freelancers, who want to work at our co-working space, but they don't have the chance um, what to do with their babies. So we said, OK, you can bring your babies. We arrange an apartment and a babysitter. Problem solved. And this idea that I had is not the only space. It's so beautiful to see that there are already 6,000 6, spaces out there at the moment. And the number is tremendously growing. In the last two years, um, the number did grow by 100%. And after two years of operating the co-working space, we thought, OK, um, we want to meet some new people. Why not having a one-week co-working space camp event somewhere else, somewhere different, where we can meet new people? And that's what we did. We spread it out to all the co-working spaces. I'm traveling a lot, and I always go to all the co-working spaces. Um, I did a safari you know, to some of the co-working spaces in Bangalore in the last days. And it's so beautiful to see how different uh, co-working spaces are made, um, how the host is um, bringing his identity in. And this is a co-working camp, how it typically looks like. So we had, for example, here 19 different nationalities from the Middle East and North Africa region. And we worked uh, on one challenge for one week. And it was so beautiful to see how people become friends and that it's a global network of inspiring people. And yes, the vision that I showed you before happened also during such a co-working camp. Because when you go snorkeling with the people that you don't know too well yet, um, then you, it becomes really a strong bond. So this is how we find people. Number two, um, how we can figure out that it works out that we work together. And here we introduced an event it's a lunch format, it's called Food for Feedback. So whenever someone needs feedback on a certain topic, he organizes spaghetti or cooks pizza or whatever, and invites the community, let's have lunch together tomorrow. My topic is uh, XYZ, and I would need all the people in the fields of creative industry and IT industry to have a very uh, diverse feedback 
on my problem. And this works out so well, you cannot imagine. After one hour, you have different angles of your problem. You get home with an entire list of advices, and it helps a lot of people already very much, and it's so easy to do. Uh, I invite you to use this method as well, it's really easy. When it comes to co-working, you have, of course, different characters in such a co-working space. For example, Armin, he's the typical hardware, software geek. I mean, he's a genius. And then on the other side, you have um, types as Dagobert Duck, in this case, Matthias, who is more into the finance part, how to make money with such an idea, how to sell it, how to find clients. And it's so beautiful to see that when those characters, so Armin and Matthias in this case, they met each other there, and they came up with this idea of a smart meter, but on an open source basis. So every engineer can work on this on his own. Um, the source code is on GitHub, and it's good to see when people come together and have success because they were under the top 10 green start during 2016. This inspires other co-workers to work hard, to be inspiring, to get and hear and listen to the feedback of the others, and to work on their dreams, yes. In the beginning, I always wanted to have partners, co-founders, cooperation partners. And after a while, I thought, okay, um, I can do it alone. I have my coworkers. We are a good community. I am responsible for all that. And it's so beautiful to see Then, if you don't force it, then partners come by themselves. So we have a lot of partners at the moment. The newest one to introduce is BMW. They ask us for help. Can you imagine this big company? It's a multinational company. Um, asked us for help um, to introduce a co-working space together in Munich. And this is what we are up for at the moment. Point three, keep in touch. Because the life of people changes. Some have to go away. I mean, after a co-working camp, of course, everyone goes home again. And one tool, of course, is Facebook. We post a lot. I share a lot when I'm inspired what people do. So Facebook is great. And on the other hand, um, we have a second method how to stay in contact with people. It's very much inspired by Stefan Sagermeister and The Happy Show. And it's basically this question. So with this question, you within seconds can have very deep conversations on a scale from one to 10. How happy are you? And why? And this question, I have 50 people that I met in the last four years, which are spread all around the world. And it's not easy to stay in contact with them. I mean, usually you call people when you need something from them. But this question gives me the chance to call them every month and ask them how they are. So when they see my telephone number on the phone, they already know, OK, it's already this time. We have to talk about the really important stuff again. Um, another magical thing that happens when you stick to your idea and to your passion and you don't give up. I mean, co-working is not the greatest business model on earth. And a lot of people told me, don't do that. Um, you will lose all your money. So you will attract only the losers who want to make advantage out of you. And then it's so beautiful that after four years, you, were, you are invited to meet Barack Obama at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit in Silicon Valley and pitch um, the idea of co-working camps. And I mean, I'm not well connected. I come from the country. My parents uh, have a really settled background. Um, my grandmother and grandfather used to be farmers, so it's possible. And we strongly believe in that when you combine co-working with do what you love, then it, by magic, because so many people are involved in co-working, they come to events, um, they spread this culture to their families. And when you think about this um, rising number of co-working spaces, we can easily, within some years, impact 200 million people with this influence of do what you love, try to set up and be happy. Thank you. <laughs>